it's not showing up here yet. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're good. Hello friends! Welcome back to our awesome Summer of Science as we are doing fun paper circuits that are themed every single week. We have some great stuff in store. Yesterday we made this cute little R2-D2. Today we are going to make this Millennium Falcon to also sort of create some really fun play if you guys want to make them. So this is the printout that you should have for today. This one's a little bit different than the one that was sent in the beginning of the week, but it was sent this morning. If you didn't print that one out, that's fine. If you have the old one, no big deal. Um, tomorrow we're going to make the Star Destroyer so that we can have an enemy to fight, and then that means we actually need the good guys to fight the enemy. So Thursday we're going to make our X-Wing Starfighter, and then Friday we're going to go back to a nice easy circuit and make some fun Star Wars characters as a bobblehead, which will be really, really fun. So we've got some great stuff in store as we learn all about these paper circuits. I'm going to tell you guys what you need before we get to our shout out. So if you want a shout out, make sure you type your name in the box, either on YouTube or Zoom. For our parents who would prefer their kids not on YouTube, you can always go into our Zoom classroom and you can get access to that at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And all of your support helps us keep creating the things that we're doing and it's from as little as a dollar a week, so not too much. Um, so what do we need to make it? Well, you need the printout. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to make this without the printout. You need a pair of scissors so that we can cut it out. You're gonna need some conductive tape, so you can usually find this at your garden store. Copper tape, um, there are sometimes aluminum tapes if it's silvery, that's totally fine. You need a non-conductive tape, so something that's plasticky, electrical tape, scotch tape is one of my favorites because you can still see through it. Masking tape will work, duct tape will work. All of those guys are non-conductive, so they don't help the electrons go through the circuit. You need some LEDs to light up. I have a box of specific colored LEDs. Some of you guys might have rainbow LEDs if you want to add a little movement into your project. You need a battery to light up your LEDs. So we need something to power our circuit. We're using 2032 batteries. There are a whole lot of different size batteries that are coin cell batteries that will work for you. We just need them to be three volts. And then we need stuff to decorate with because by the end of this, we are going to want to decorate and make it really fun because who wants a Millennium Falcon that looks like this? I don't know, maybe somebody does, but we definitely, I think it's cooler when you have this. And this guy is going to be really fun because it has a switch in it, so it's off until you press in a certain part of your Millennium Falcon and the boosters go on. And we're going to talk about a really fun and interesting way to try to prevent the light from going into your ship and shining more as the booster so you can get into warp speed today. So that is what we need to make our stuff and what we are making. We don't need a hole puncher, but sometimes we do need a hole punchers in our summer science projects, but we don't need that today. That was just like to prop up my Millennium Falcon. All right, let's see who is with us today for our friends as we do shout outs. If you'd like, you can start cutting this guy out. All right, I'm gonna cut it out a little bit because I know sometimes I'm a faster cutter. All right, who do we have? All right, we have, I Ooh. see Naomi says hi to the world. Hello! And also your R2-D2 was epic. Oh my goodness, it was epic. It was so good. I was, I was floored, very good job. I'm really excited to see what you do for the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> we also have Kailani here. Yay, hello Kailani and Meet Me Keikoa. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are joining us today. Uh, Naomi's showing her R2-D2 in Zoom. It's just Ugh, as cute as it's in the picture. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. All the right decorations. We're going to get that picture into our little pre-show slideshow so you guys can see it tomorrow. You know, so that's uh, all we got for shout outs. Which Yay! Is awesome. That's cool. We got to say hi to Rohan because Rohan's coming at lunchtime. And so, maybe Lila and Millie. And maybe Lila and Millie. And they maybe might George and Henry later. And maybe George and Henry. Yeah. So, that's okay. All right. And probably John. I bet John is going to do this later, too. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Let's say hi to everybody. It's one of my favorites. This is going to be fun. All right. So, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut around these solid black lines. And then, after we cut the solid black lines, we're going to fold on these gray dotted lines. So, we cut the solid black and we fold the gray. And the reason why we fold it as we go instead of waiting till the end is that sometimes that folding can sort of jostle our circuit, especially when the fold wasn't there before and we have to really press on the paper. We have to really get like 
our fingers in there, we're putting a lot of pressure on it, and sometimes that will break our paper circuit after we've already made it work. And so what I found is if we sort of pre-fold it, if we crease everything, then it kind of works a lot better um, in terms of breaking that circuit. So if you get your circuit to work, then you can fold it up and you don't break it as you fold it. And that can be really frustrating if you have a circuit that worked and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. And that's a total bummer. Do you have any cutting techniques for this one, Dr. Um, I like to cut from a lot of different directions. So sometimes you might see like a funny thing like this and it's like, oh, that's gonna be really hard to make that turn. Sometimes I go in, I just go in from different directions. I might cut straight up here and I might start over here at the bottom so I can come up this curve. And that can make it a little easier. Makes it a little more difficult as you're cutting to show. But see, now I can come up this little curve and I don't have to come back because it just already pops out for me. That's one of my nice little tricks that I do when I cut. Just in general, as if an angle seems difficult, I like to just try from a different side. Or right now, I'm actually just going to cut straight across those tips. And I'm going to come back to that part later. And I'm going to do the same thing actually down here where there's this teeny tiny little triangle. I'm just going to cut straight up and I'll cut that triangle out later. And that'll make it a little bit easier for me to manage. Well, again, I'll cut straight across these tips. And then I don't have to deal with this big clunky piece of paper. I can just now cut out these smaller pieces. And that sometimes feels a lot easier. So now I can cut. And when I do these guys, I actually cut both the long pieces first and then I sort of flip it up a little to try to get it onto that line like that. That's a little trick I have too. Oh, and this one actually, it cuts a little bit further down. So I need to cut a little further down. And that makes it into a nice little flap. And you'll notice there's that crease fold. So this is actually gonna flap. It's gonna get again. So yeah, so I had cut just this rectangle out, but I had, the lines go a little further. So I'm gonna actually, we wanna keep that little flap on. That's gonna hide part of the insides of our Millennium Falcon after we're done. And then this one I can just cut in two spots. So I come in from one angle and I can come in from another angle. And that makes it a little bit easier to get these tough corners. And they don't want to cut on the dotted lines, right? Yes. Just the black solid lines are what we're cutting on. And sometimes you have to go back through, like I missed my line a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect as you're cutting this. I might try to cut a little bit more off. Yeah. Maybe you could cut George's out for her too. I can probably do that. And then this one, you'll notice the dark line is going straight down. It kind of makes a T. So I'm gonna also going to make this line. It's going to cut straight down. And then I want to make sort of a T. So I'll just sort of lift it up and make a little tiny snip, just like that. And another little tiny snip, just like that. And that's going to let me crease those guys. And so if you're still cutting, I'll get started on Georgia. She wants to make a fun one. So again, on these hard corners, I like to come in from any direction that's easy. It's going to be hard for me to sort of turn my scissors really sharply. So I could come in from up here and then I can... We're cutting on the solid black lines and we're folding or creasing on those dotted lines that are slight, sort of a light gray. All right, and the folds on this paper circuit help us give some height to that Millennium Falcon, which allows us to have a button that is always off unless we press it. And that's like a very handy thing to have. All right, and so, if we have a little bit of trouble coming in here, I'll show you how I cut it the first time. This one's a little trickier because it's 
fewer ways to come in, but I'm finding, oh, you know what? Maybe my scissors are feeling crowded. I'm gonna cut up here first, and I'll cut that piece off. I can cut up this way. And now I know that that's gonna be really hard, so maybe I do come back up here, and I go down this little piece, like that, and then I'm gonna cut straight across this bottom piece. And now all I have left to do on this extra one is cut out these little pieces. So I can cut out sort of this Y shape, like this. And I'll just cut that top piece off. Ah. Get my scissors back in there. Like that. And then recall we're cutting on these dark solid black lines. So I've got to cut this T right here. So let's see, just like this. And these are little flaps that are going to also, again, cover the inside of that Millennium Falcon. So it's got sort of paper thickness all the way around. Here's going to be a tricky one. So I'm going to cut from one direction and I'm going to come in from the other side to cut that piece out. And sometimes you can just pull it. If it didn't get all the way, you can just pull it. So it's a little easier. And then this one, it's sort of like an H. I'm gonna cut all the way up to here and then I'm gonna cut there, leaving a flap for myself. I wanna leave that little flap so that in the end, I can definitely cover up all of my circuit stuff. And the nice thing is if we cover up the circuit stuff by folding our paper, we actually really protect our circuits. So you're gonna end up with a little guy that looks like this. Now we need to fold on all of these dotted lines. So here's the one that I can just fold up. We're always gonna end up folding things so that they, our paper circuit is covered. So this is the part, if you wanted to really work on your art without having bumps, now's a great time to hit pause and do your artwork. I've done my artwork after it's folded up and it hasn't been too bad, but it depends on how you like to do your artwork. But I'm gonna fold this up I'm always folding towards the circuit stuff. All right, so I'm gonna fold this tab in, just like that. I'm gonna fold these tabs in. Doesn't have to be perfect, and if you have the thicker cardstock, it kind of, once you get like two points, it kind of likes to bend the way you want it to. These guys are gonna fold up here. So it's gonna like, kind of like barn doors that are opening on this one. Just like this. So we're gonna fold all these down. Do you wanna get some good creases on these so that when we do try to put it together, it gets put together pretty easily and we're not finagling too much so that we can really hide that paper circuit inside, which not only makes it look amazing because, I don't know, adds some magic when we can't see our paper circuit. It also really protects our paper circuit. So I'm gonna fold, I have two lines here, so I'm gonna fold, sort of closing it in here, just like that. And I'm gonna do that again, but then slightly further down so that it lines up right here. And that gives us that thickness of our Millennium Falcon. And that thickness is really important because you'll notice our circuit goes from here over to here and because it's so thick, we'll have to press down to make the contact. And then when we take it up, it won't be on there, which is really handy. It's a great way to have a fun switch. Our last piece is gonna be this guy. What you're gonna do, there's, you're gonna fold this long rectangle in half. So I'm gonna fold it towards the circuit again. Like all these folds are towards my circuit so that it covers up some of that circuit that I'm going to build in just a little bit. So I just folded this rectangle in half. Just like that, you can crease it really good if you want to. And then I'm gonna fold this part just up because there's that line right there. So I'm gonna fold this part coming up like that. All right, and if you want to, you can also even sort of kind of bend these pieces up because they're gonna fold around this part right here in the end. Can you show them what the finished product looks like? So the finished product, it looks like this guy. 
And you'll notice all these pieces that we just folded up and around are going to be pieces that give this guy the depth so that when we want to press on the circuit, which side is my circuit, let's see, over here, it's off and then because that's because the copper tape is on the roof, so I have to press the roof down to the battery to turn it on, which is pretty cool. So that is what all of these folds are for, is it sort of is going to help make this little 3D model of our Millennium Falcon. All right, so now we need to wire up our boosters. All right, you'll need some of your copper tape to do this. And one of the things that Evan actually had the idea of was, wouldn't it be cool if the booster was really facing towards the back of the ship and it didn't just light up the entire ship? And that is a really cool idea because you think of boosters and they shoot backwards and they don't go all over in the ship. And while it's not perfect, you don't see a whole lot of my blue booster light up here. And the reason why is we actually blocked it with some foil or some conductive tape. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put a strip of conductive tape here and we're gonna cover it in non-conductive tape so that when we roll this up and it comes up, you'll notice that then my boosters, they can only come this way because light doesn't get through foil or metal or anything very well. So that's sort of our light blocker to make sure that our boosters are in the back. So I'm gonna tape this onto my Curious George book and we can get started wiring up our paper circuits for today. Let's get this guy taped on, just like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to lay down the copper tape right along this very bottom line right here, just like that. We're gonna cover that bottom line with the copper tape and that's gonna act as that light block for going into the ship, all right? And again, when you peel your copper tape, you wanna peel it a little bit and stick it straight down onto your paper where you want to go, all right? So I'm gonna peel it a little bit and I'm gonna stick it and I'm gonna to continue to peel and stick as I go. So like Vinatia's here. Oh, hi Vinatia! Oh, I'm so glad you're joining us today. That makes me so happy. I hope, I hope you got our postcard, Vinatia. I made a fun little postcard for Vinatia. Well, thank you. All right, so once I get to the end, I'm just gonna pinch off that copper tape. Now, if you wanted, you could add like a second layer and really get up to that line. You don't have to. I mean, just one little bit does a lot. But to make sure that this copper tape doesn't break our circuit, because it is conductive, we're gonna now just cover it with a piece of scotch tape or masking tape or whatever kind of tape that you have. I'm just gonna, I love this for this part especially because then I can still see my circuit underneath. So can you explain why you put the copper tape and the masking tape on for us again real quick? Yes, so the copper tape is so that we block the light. So this copper tape ultimately is actually facing the back of the ship. And so the LEDs, even when they're pointing to the back, they also put light everywhere. So this guy is gonna be like this nice bar that the light can't get through coming into the ship. So it's gonna make it, it's gonna give it an effect where it's really just boosters coming off the back. But because copper tape is a part of a circuit, it's conductive, it lets electrons flow, they always choose the easiest highway, always. And so if they don't have to do the work of going through an LED, if they can skip it and just go through like a copper tape jumper, they're gonna always do that. And here, if I fold this copper tape up, you'll notice it's gonna to connect to these two lines. And those electrons are gonna be like, oh, look at this super easy pathway. I don't need to go through an LED, why would I do that? And they'll just go through this copper tape piece and our circuit won't work. So if we want the light blocking of the copper tape, but we don't want it to act as a highway for those little electrons as they go through our circuit, we need to cover it with something that doesn't conduct electricity, which is our scotch tape. Plastics don't conduct electricity. So a scotch tape, a masking tape, anything like that will work perfectly for you. So copper tape down, then masking tape or something yep. on top. Yeah, so I have copper tape on the bottom and then I have the scotch tape on the top. It looks like we got Frankie and Iris here. Oh, hello Frankie and Iris. I'm glad you joined us again. They did a fantastic job yesterday. First paper circuit, they got it working. And Frankie did, she was so good. She persevered a lot because I it see it decorating. Tricky. She used a red light. So cool. Oh, yes. 
I thought she had a rainbow light. Oh, maybe it's rainbow and I just can't see it. Mm, maybe. But it looks good. All right, so once we have this piece down, we're gonna add the copper tape on to these pieces right here. And this is actually something that a lot of people struggle with, is getting through these bins without breaking your copper tape. And that's something that will come with practice. Frankie really, she kept going, man, yesterday. I was so proud of her. Um, because if it breaks, we have this sort of like break in our highway where the cars can come here and then we have a highway up here. And all the cars have to somehow climb poles and get to the higher highway and it just doesn't work. We don't have flying cars yet or flying electrons. So we gotta make sure that they don't break as we go. And I'll show you some tricks to bending it. So again, we're gonna just get it started and I'm gonna follow the lines here just like that. And now I wanna bend up. So what I can do is I can give myself some extra and I can just put it where I wanna go much further from the bend. It's not right at the bend. I've got this loop at the bend, but then I can just press that loop down. And I can do the same thing here. I can give myself a bit extra and I can go much further and I can just press it down and I can just press that down and it's very happy. And then the copper tape, when I get to where I wanna go, I can just rip it. You can use scissors for that too. And then I like to press it down with my thumb to make sure that it's really stuck down in place right there. All right, just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing on this one, which is much longer. So we really wanna measure sort of this piece out to make sure that we don't run out. And every time I measure, I give myself some extra. I would rather waste a few inches of copper tape then get to almost all of the way there and find out I run out of copper tape and then have to do all of those bins and stuff again. So now I'm gonna put this down here. It's okay if it touches this bottom copper tape because remember this bottom one here has that scotch tape on it. It's not actually gonna to be touching each other because I have that sort of plastic between them. But it cannot touch this little piece I just put down. All right, so these two pieces that I'm about to put down on this yellow line and the one that I just put down, they can't touch each other. Otherwise, the electrons will do the same thing. They'll just bypass those electrons. We want to make sure they have to hop from one side to the other of the, of the LED. All right, so I'm going to put this guy down. I'm just going to make sure that they don't touch, so I've got a nice gap there. I have this corner here, so again, I'm going to give myself a nice little bit of extra copper tape. And I'm gonna come up to somewhere way up high where I know I wanna be. I can just press it down there. And this whole thing I can just press down. Although, ooh, I need to be careful because I don't want them to touch each other right there. So what I can do is I'll just sort of try to fold them out of the way, just like that. And it, even a tiny gap is what I need. I don't need something huge, just a little gap to make sure they're not touching each other. And I'm gonna keep going on with my lovely little circuit, pressing it down. And you'll notice my circuit, it's not perfect. It's got little wobbles in it. That's okay. No big deal. I'm gonna give myself some extra here and just press it down. And I'll get this guy, maybe I didn't give myself enough extra. I'm gonna give myself a bigger loop like that so I can actually really get some wobbly pieces in it and press it down because I, again, I don't want it to break. It's okay if you're not perfectly on this line here. We do need to hit this end point though because that's where it's gonna touch the battery. So they're all lined up for us to make sure that we touch the battery. And then see, look, it's a good thing I gave myself that extra because I was really close. And I'm gonna use my thumbnail again. I'm gonna press it down. Let's make it nice and flat. Just like that. All right, and so that's really handy. Now I have my two circuits. I've got my short leg here, which happens to be the shorter wire, and I have my long leg that's gonna go here. All right, and there's a little tiny piece of tape on the long leg right here that is on your thing, and that's just in case you wanna put your LED sort of this way to make sure the short leg doesn't cross over this one and touch that one, right? If I put a leg over these two, those two wires are connected and the electrons are like, woohoo, don't gotta do any work. So if you want, you can put a little piece, just a tiny piece of tape that goes right along here. 
just to cover that up so that if you have an LED leg that wanted to go across, it won't connect anymore. I've got that scotch tape in place. So again, I put just a little short piece of tape right there to cover up this piece of the leg just in case that when I get my LED, and I'll show you guys, when I get my little LED leg, if I want to like sort of put it over here, you'll notice that, oops, this leg, let's make it so I can hold it better. This leg would have crossed both those wires and that will break our circuit. So if you're gonna have an LED that comes off of that direction, we definitely need to put a little piece of tape. You could put your LEDs over here though so that they don't cross anything and that's totally fine. No big deal. All right, so for our LEDs, we are gonna take our legs and we're gonna spread them apart just a little bit. It looks kind of like that. And remember you have the short leg and the long leg, which is just slightly longer. And you're gonna press them down here and you're just gonna tape it down. Now don't tape it down so your LED is on top of this copper tape line because remember the copper tape will prevent the light from going through. So you'd probably lose a booster by doing that. So you could come over here or you could put them closer together if you wanted to like this. I kind of like putting mine over here. And then we just need the scotch tape to tape both of these legs down. And again, we gotta make sure the leg is on top of the copper tape so that we're not sort of up here in paper. And these both legs need to be on top of copper tape. That's really important. So I'm gonna take a smaller piece of tape actually to do this first one, because if I put a long piece of tape I'm gonna cover all this up and I won't be able to add that second LED. So I'm gonna take just a little piece of tape for right now. I'm gonna tape this guy in place just like that. All right, and I'm gonna, I like to press on those legs really well to make sure they get really good contact. All right, so I'm just gonna spend a moment and press that down. And I'm gonna do a booster on the other side. I like blue boosters, I don't know why. Maybe it's from, maybe it's from Star Wars, maybe it's from Star Trek, where I think of, every time I think of them going to like warp speed, I think of those stars making that long, starry look, and it's always blue. So it kind of makes me happy, thinking about blue thrusters. Again, when I add my next one in, I'm gonna make sure the short leg goes up to this top piece, and the long leg goes down to that bottom piece. So I need to spread those legs a little bit, just like that. And then I can tape these guys down. And I don't have to worry now about the size of my tape. I can just tape a nice long piece across because these legs are already in there. So I'm gonna take a nice piece of tape. Ooh, that actually might be too long. We'll cut that down a little. And I'm going to make sure, as I put my LED down, I wanna make sure that I have the short leg in the right spot and the long leg. I'm gonna tape this guy down, just like this. And I'm gonna tape it nice and sturdy. I wanna make sure that these LEDs, they don't wanna move. My tape was a little too long, so it's going over the LED. Not a problem, I could leave it like that if I wanted to. Um, it's not gonna change my circuit. But I like it when I can really press things down. So I'm gonna cut that off just a little bit. So I can go down a little bit more. Maybe I use this extra little tiny piece of tape tape up right here. All right, so next we are ready to tape in our battery. Before we tape it in, let's make sure our battery works. All right, and the way that we do that is we take our LED, we look for that short leg, and there's only four ways you can really put it on a battery. You can put long and short leg on top, you'll notice nothing happens. We can put long and short leg on bottom, you'll notice nothing happens. So I have to straddle the battery. I could put the long leg on the bottom and the short leg on the top, but nothing happens. But if I flip my battery around so that the long leg is on the top and the short leg's on the bottom, it will light up that LED. Now, because we have two LEDs today, I wanna make sure we can light up both LEDs because batteries can only light up so many LEDs at once. So whatever LEDs you're choosing to use today, you should try and make sure it can do two. Now I know for a fact they can do two rainbow LEDs, they can do 
two red LEDs. So pretty much, I know for a fact these batteries can do two of any of them. But this is a way to test because if we put the battery in and our circuit doesn't work, that's always a question we have is, ooh, does the battery work? I don't know. All right, so we're going to put our battery in on the green circle. And we always put it in so we can see these letters right there. So I want to be able to see the letters. The polka dotty bottom goes towards that paper. And just like before, we need to make sure we keep the top of the battery exposed. Because if I put this scotch tape straight across the top, it'd be like putting it just what I did with this piece of um, copper tape here. It's going to block the electrons from leaving the top of the battery. But to make a circuit, I have to go from the top through whatever I want to go through. So here's some LEDs and then into the bottom. And if I can't get out of the top, I can't go out of the top to start that circuit. So we got to make sure that we can touch the top metal piece. So what I do is I actually just put a little, just on the tips, the edges of those batteries is sort of what we do. And if you want to keep it more secure, you can put one on like the top and the bottom or like the top and the side. And again, you'll notice I'm not taking up too much of my battery. The top of that battery is still very much exposed. All right, and that's really important. All right, so now we wanna test our circuit. We could fold this all up and test it if we wanted to, but what if it doesn't work? It'd be great to know if it works before we fold it up. So what you can do is you can take a piece of copper tape, keep the backing on, because we'll use this for a different project, but you're gonna put it down, so copper side down, so you're gonna have copper to copper over here, anywhere on this long line, and then you're gonna put it to the top of the battery. And both of my LEDs work, which is fantastic. If one works and one doesn't, what you can do, you can first just check, oh, are they making good contact on those legs? Or did you flip one of the LEDs? Do you have the long leg at the top where the short leg needed to be? Because the LEDs, these, they're like one-way streets, they're like slides, so the electrons slide down, get really excited and make the light. They never climb up the slide. So you might have one LED where they're flying down the slide making light and maybe one LED that was flipped and they're looking at the bottom of the slide being like, what do we do? So those are two things that you can check. But once we know this works, we can also check it this way by just folding that piece over, still works. That's great, that means I'm all lined up. If it worked here, when I had this piece, like that, if it works great there, but it doesn't work when I do this, ooh, that probably means this piece is not long enough. And if that piece is not long enough, you might be like, oh my gosh, Dr. Erica, I've got everything taped in, I made this beautiful thing, I don't wanna do it again. Cool, I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm gonna show you a nice little trick. What you could do if you're in that situation is you could take a little piece of copper tape and you get it started just like this and I'm gonna fold it and stick it to itself all right so here's the sticky side right here doop, doop. this is the non sticky side I'm gonna fold it over and stick it to itself just for a little bit I'm gonna stick it to itself I'm just gonna fold it over like a hook and stick it to itself so I have this part that has copper tape here and then it's sticky what I could do is I could take that copper tape part and I could add it to my circuit. I could press it down here and I could extend this even further like that. All right, and then you would put a piece of scotch tape right here. Now this is like a little break in our circuit. It's not gonna make it so it's not as fantastic. It doesn't work as easily. But if it was broken before, this is a great way to fix it. If it's not broken, don't do that. But if it is broken, when you're folding it over, that's a way to extend that line because maybe you didn't get fully to the edge. Like I didn't get quite fully to the edge, but I'm okay, it still works for me. Maybe you got to here though, and it doesn't work, and that's a way to extend it for you. All right, so now we need to fold it up. I like to fold this bottom piece up first. So what we do is we sort of fold it. You gotta be gentle, because now we've got those LEDs in there. And I'm gonna put a piece of tape that goes right there. I'm gonna tape this guy down. It's a little tricky to do upside down. I can tape it like that and it'll hold it in place so that I can tape these sort of other pieces 
up here like that when it time comes. I'm gonna check, make sure my circuit still works, just cause I've done some stuff. Ooh, look at that, I've broken my circuit. So I'm going to undo mine and check it. What happened? I don't know. So I'm just gonna undo it. I'm gonna press down on these guys and I'm gonna check it again. And let's see. Uh-oh, I've done something to my circuit. I don't know what I've done. That's okay, that's a great chance to troubleshoot what could have happened. Let's see. Make sure that I have copper tape on that side. That would have been funny. There we go. So it looks like I just sort of, and I'm looking at it where I creased it. I have some LED legs. So I'm maybe, maybe my legs were spread a little too far apart. That's okay. We're just going to see, let's see if I, as I roll it, if I lose them. This is hard to do while vertical, but ooh, yeah. So my rolling this time, the other times that I rolled, they were totally fine. So what I'm going to do, let's see. I'm going to see if I can't smush these legs in just a little bit, or maybe, hmm, you know what? I'm going to show you guys the trick that I showed Frankie yesterday that can help make these all work. That's great. This is perfect. We can learn a new trick together. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really carefully peel up some of this tape, not all of it. Cause I want the led to sort of stay in place, but I'm going to peel it up and underneath, I'm going to put a little piece of copper tape facing down. So it makes like a copper tape sandwich. Oh, I might have to end up peeling up all my tape. My tape seems unhappy. Oh, that was cause that was the small piece. All right, so what I can do is I can take a little piece of this copper tape. All right, I'm not going to take the backing off. I'm going to leave the backing on. And I can put it sort of face down so I see the paper face down onto it. I'm trying to get both of the LEDs at once to just have to do it one time. So I'm going to put this guy face down. And I got to make sure that it doesn't connect the two rails. Well, I'm just going to go straight along the lines, just like that. And then I can put my piece of tape back down over it to hold that in place like that. And I can do the same thing for the top, which is actually the short legs up here. And I can take a little piece here like this, and I'm going to put it face down on top of these pieces. If you rolled yours up and it worked fine, that is fantastic. You're a step ahead of me. And you can start folding it up. All right, so now I'm gonna do that piece. Just like that. Ah, I lost an LED, that's okay. Ooh, those are awfully close to touching each other. We're gonna fix that. Make it so they don't touch. And I'm going to double check my LED directions. And I think I need a new piece of tape. It's not going to hold everything in for me. And that's okay. I'll just use a new piece of tape. Now that I have these cool flaps that are like little, little sandwich machines almost. I'm going to just tape it like this. Like that. And I'm going to add a new piece of tape over by my LED. Like that. That guy should be taped in and we can test it. They work, which is good. And then I can just double test it again. I like to double, there we go. Yep, that's looking pretty good. So let's roll it up again and see what happens. I'm gonna pinch it really good as I roll right there. Just around those legs to make sure I don't lose the contact. Now they're still working, which is good. All right. So that's a little spot that I can pinch to make sure that it stays in place. All right, so now I'm gonna take it off my Curious George and we are gonna fold this guy all the way up. And again, you can always, you can keep checking it whenever you want to. And the way to really fold this up is I like to fold it in half and then add a piece of tape right there. And that will give me sort of a starting spot. And you can do that a little more easily if you add it to one half of it and see how I've got like half the tape on it and half the tape off. I can come down here, I can fold it 
so that they kind of line up, and then I just fold that piece of tape over, just like that. And then it's kind of in place, and I, so you'll notice I have all these other fun little tabs, right? So I'm going to put my tabs, and I'm going to tape all these tabs in place. So here's a tab right here, so I'm going to take it, put a little bit of tape on it, and then I'm going to tape it to this bottom piece. And the nice thing is, is that this then gives it that sort of thickness, which is what our switch relies on. All right, and so I've got these three tabs that are sort of in here to hide that area. I'm going to sort of finagle them a little bit. Just like that. And I can tape those in place as well. Now we just have a lot of taping. Let's get it right in there. But all this extra taping is worth it because then you get that really cool sort of 3D Millennium Falcon look, which I really like. I'm going to tape this guy here, this little tab right here. Like this, and if you have an earlier version, there might just be fewer tabs. You might have a couple of spots where it's a little bit more open. All right, so I'm gonna take this tab down, like this. Zoop. And I can always double check, still working for me. That's good. I can press these guys, just double make sure. And then this piece is just gonna go and fold around like that and tape on. So I like to just tape these edge pieces on like this. And if you're finding you have a lot of trouble with when you roll fold that piece, you know what, sometimes the best way? Take out what's creating the trouble, just take out that roll fold piece. Okay, that can be a tricky piece to make right there. And if that is what's causing it to break, then we wanna Prevent it. Ah! It caused mine to break. We're going to open it back up again. Hmm. It's sort of funny how when you're on live, you find your problems. But that's okay. Maybe I put my LED legs a little too far apart from each other. Let's see. Well, it seems to work there. Hmm. I'm noticing that it works until I really fold it over, which is interesting. So maybe I won't fold it and press it. Let's see if I can make it work like, well, that's gonna, oh, yep, yeah, it does work like that. So I'm just gonna tape these guys much more loosely. Or what I could do is make it so that this part, something here is cutting my circuit, just the way that I taped those LEDs in. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is, but what I can do to fix that is um, give it a little bit less pressure on those LEDs. That's a great way to fix that, it's just a little bit less pressure. All right, making sure that we are lighting up. And I'll just put that guy in there like that. And there we go, now we got two lighting up. And I can tape it in. And then you can decorate it however you like. I. I know Naomi is probably looking up an amazing picture of the Millennium Falcon and getting some really good detail in there. Not yet. We're doing some troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. going to do an amazing job. Fantastic. Well, I'm almost done. So we've got this little guy working. You can decorate it like this. You can decorate it however you want. I added a little roll of paper right here so that it's like that little side shooter piece. I just rolled up a piece of paper and pinched it. Cause I thought that was a kind of a fun thing. And then you have this fun little Millennium Falcon with the boosters in the back, which is really cool. So this one's kind of blank and boring right now, but that's because it's a great art project for later. Hopefully you guys enjoyed making this Millennium Falcon with us and you got to see some troubleshooting right as we were going along. I know it sounds like Naomi might be having a little bit of trouble and that's okay because I'm gonna go over into Zoom and we will get your guys' projects working because you guys are paper circuit champs. I want to say thank you so much for joining us on um, YouTube tomorrow. What are we doing tomorrow? We're going to do the Star Destroyer. So make sure you join us tomorrow live at 9 a.m. for the Star Destroyer as we continue our paper circuits with Star Wars Week. You can always support us and get into our Zoom room at patreon.com slash Research. 
and I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day, and off to Zoom we go. We'll see you soon.